talking about. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, ooh, you're 34. My goodness. I'm 23. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, Chris. Mr. Buttcrack Media <laughs> would do very well on Brighton <laughs> Beach, especially in the summer. And, uh, well, he might get what Stream Elements has. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this is incredibly offensive, but also funny. <laughs> So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're 15 minutes into the show, and uh, we're on to point one, which is the journey of Arwen Avalon. And now I'm going to hide myself, because then it'll make me sound more professional instead of me doing this every time I forget what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. down. So uh, see you guys later. <laughs> All right, folks. Now, Arwen, how did you first get into content creation. I think from memory, we both started our efforts in a similar time, but through different circumstances. My first mm -hmm. video of the second run was giving my thoughts on a bus strike. So yeah, that's, that's certainly something. Uh, it is indeed. Mm. It is indeed. Now, are you asking how I got into content creation or how yeah, I got how did you, YouTube? How did you begin your efforts? What was, what spurred such a such a move um the death of my husband oh i mean you know we're, we're gonna we're, we're talking real tonight right <laughs> we're talking Talk about reality, a lead balloon but... folks I, it's you know it's it's fine really no um yeah my husband died uh february of 2020 and uh, that was right before the lockdowns mm -hmm. you know pretty much u.s worldwide you know mm -hmm. the whole bit and so I was, I mean, I, you know, of course I have children that, that are living, still living at home. Uh, mm -hmm. and I did have my parents, but pretty much other than that, any kind of outside influence or outside society was, was gone. And so for about a year and a half, I was pretty isolated, you know, and of course I was in mourning, so I really didn't care about going out doing things anyway, mm -hmm. but it was just a big suck fest. Let's call it what it is. Hmm. And I, you know, I pretty much thought, well, my life has changed and it's, I mean, obviously it's changed, but I didn't really know what to do. I didn't really have any drive to do anything again. You know, I didn't see anyone. I didn't just yada, yada. Well, I, it was about, it was about, a, hmm, I, I want to say June or July of 2021. Mm -hmm. I kind of walked outside and I got in my car and I had to go to the store. Cause you know, life doesn't wait for anything. No, no. People it die. Not. You still have to pay bills. You still have to, you know, take care of things. You, you know, tax season. I mean, it, you, oh. you gotta go grocery shopping. You just stuff goes on. You gotta get mm. it done. So I was going to the store one day and I remember looking around and thinking, why is it so bright outside? Everything is so unusually bright. And it dawned on me. It was because it was, you know, late spring, early summer. Hmm. And I had so shut off my senses that that kind of jolted me awake. And it was that point I realized, you know, my husband's gone, but I'm not gone. I'm still here. And it's been a year and a half and I've, done pretty much all of my morning inside my home in, in pretty much one or two rooms. And I kicked up one long after that, I kicked up YouTube and, um, Loki's morning of mischief. One of his Ooh. morning shows came up in my recommended, never heard of him, was not involved in the pop culture community, you know, to any great extent. I, I, I'd seen a couple of people here and there, but I never watched anyone consistently, never got involved nothing likewise for for many years since yeah since the uh later days of gamergate in in late 2015 folks i've had my uh, foot in the door in regards to, to pop culture creators watching mm -hmm. them occasionally since i was 16 years old i'm i'm 23 now getting close to 24 in uh in late june of 2023 and it's it's been a wild ride we've seen Plenty of people rise and fall and go absolutely batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and it just goes to show that 
that time never stops moving. It does. And you've, you've got to keep on going. And hopefully you can keep on growing as a creator, as well as a, a person, no matter what tragedy you face. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. So I went into Loki's, I uh, went in, I was like, well, you know, cause, cause I didn't know, okay, is this, is this Marvel's Loki? Is this the Norse God Loki? Is this a person Loki? Who the hell is this Loki? You know? And of course the thumbnails, Chris's thumbnails are extremely eye catching. Mm. So, and I don't even remember the subject. I have no clue, but I was up, I had coffee. I saw it was a live stream. I figured why the hell not? Let's, let's go in. And his, you know, people were saying, Hey to everyone in chat, which surprised me. Cause you don't see that in a lot of communities. You don't just see people saying, Hey to everyone. No, uh, there's, usually there's, one there's or two people, that. but they're just, they're, there's, there's not that much depth no, in the vast not. majority of channels, mainly because everyone used to focus so much on, on growing mm. their channel like playing wide in in Stellaris, if if people know what that game is, instead of playing tall or, or deep, building a solid base for uh, your community. Right. And it, it's great to see what Loki was and still is doing to this day, and and hopefully he gets his his water cooled PC fixed. I still can't get my head around a water cooled PC, but uh, yeah. still, hopefully he gets it fixed. But please continue, Arlen. Well, I went in there and I started saying, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw Steven's comment in chat. Hey, Pat. <laughs> I've been derailed. <laughs> it, it, it's good to know that a second Earth is now approaching the chat. <laughs> Chicken uh, balls. Shut up, Steven. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. I can read the chat sometimes. I get distracted. Uh, okay. Okay, I went into Loki's. I went into Loki's chat. And, you know, people were saying, hey, and I said, hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Chicken cat balls. You can, you can clip that if you want. Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> and, and speaking of Stream Elements bot, hell, I didn't know nothing. I said, hey, Stream Elements bot. You know, I was saying, hey, everyone. I had no <laughs> idea what the hell it was. <laughs> and people said, hey, back. The mod said, hey, back. I think Mark, uh, Mark and Larry Larry, I think were a couple of the first ones. That said, hey, back. And, you know, I started listening to Loki and I'm like, this is cool. You know, this and it wasn't just hearing Loki talk. It was hearing Loki talk and the interaction with the chat. It was like they were having a fellowship and a conversation. And that intrigued me. And I felt for the first time I realized how thirsty I was. Oh, for, my. yeah. Hashtag blame Mark. How thirsty I was for companionship. Mm hmm. For just, you know, someone to say hey to. Because, because you know, my kids, even though we were all grieving together, in, in a sense, mm -hmm. they were doing their own thing. You know, they had their own friends. They had their own stuff they were dealing with. And I was doing mine. And, you know, I won't lie. I'm ashamed to admit it. But I kind of shut down. For, for quite a while, I shut down. I, I tried to be there for them as a mother. But thank goodness they're older it's still it never mm. hurts when you lose a parent and I, I don't mean to to downplay their ages with losing their dad because they were very close with their dad yeah um but they had their own things going on and they had their own self soothers mm. you know they had their friends they they were already well acquainted with you know youtube and twitch and all that i wasn't not to this degree not as a degree to find friendship you know, I watched so a million people. cat videos, yeah, there, but there, not there's so many person. people, and there will be so many more millions of people. And it's a good job that for the most part, they all speak English either as a first or second language. So mm -hmm. I would love in 10 years, uh, Arwen, to bring on a, a fellow creator who's just started who's based in, I don't know, Sudan or Egypt or hell, yeah. even Afghanistan and, yeah. and go through their origins as a, as a creator because information and technology, folks, as it progresses, all the old tech will no doubt be used by the second and third world and we can get their perspectives on how things <clears throat> should be. And I think mm -hmm. that would be great because then the world can be more balanced It'll right. get a lot more conservative, but uh, it'll be more balanced instead of 
Instead of right. blue-haired land whales, folks, we'll be having turban people telling us what we can and cannot <laughs> do. Yeah. Uh, but um, oh, I forgot what you were saying. Oh, Brief? that ba basically, yeah, that that I was I was seeing this I was seeing this interaction between a creator, the streamer, and his chat, and and it seemed like, uh, you know, that there, there was friendship there. Mm -hmm. And there was camaraderie and the people were talking in chat and it just that the fact that people actually said hey to me and not ignored me astounded me. It it just it just did. Although so it, I does thought, get, it does get more difficult the more people. Uh, it are, does. Are it does. Yes, it, it, it really does. Mm. But I decided, well, this was cool. I enjoyed this. Um, you know, I'm going to come back. So I kind of kept mm. coming back. And I started to recognize names and not just the names, but remember things that they had said in chat, mm. you know, about themselves and, or things they had been going through. And then they started to recognize me and I didn't feel like, you know, I was encroaching. And as a matter of fact, I never felt like I was encroaching on something. I never mm. felt like, oh, I'm in this chat. I don't really belong. You know, I'm, I'm butting into somebody's community. I never mm -hmm. felt that way. I was mm. always, I always felt like, I was welcome there and that I belonged there hmm. and I kept coming back and, and purple Valkyrie at that time was streaming, um, at 11, uh, Eastern. Oh. So I'd go over there and I'd watch hers. And then I found, um, fat Steven with his Babylon five and his Fortnite streams. Oh. And I'll in Babylon five is my, my absolute favorite sci-fi TV show ever. Um, I have like a top five, but that's my number one. That's my ride or die. If I could only keep one, it would be Babylon 5. I just adore it. I don't and, think I've ever seen it. Oh, and, and don't listen. No, you got to start with season one. I'm sorry. I know some people will say you can go right into season two. Start mm. with season one because it lays a lot of groundwork that you'll need later. But it's only five seasons. Mm. It's five seasons and it's got some films. Well, I will, say, so I will good. say, Arwen, I've seen plenty of Deep Space Nine. So uh, I, I think Deep I may Space get the gist. Yeah, they get I the love. Of the show. Well, see, JMS, who created Babylon Five, pitched the idea of a space station mm -hmm. to you know the I don't want to say the Star Trek people. I don't know exactly which was was doing it, but yeah, pitched that idea, and they were like, "Well, mm -hmm. you know, no, thank you." And I guess at the time they weren't ready to do one, but then so Babylon Five went on, and I think a year later, um, DS Nine started. So a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, JMS, you know, he." He copied uh, Deep Space Nine. No, he didn't. But the beautiful thing is both the shows are different enough that you can enjoy them as their own individual entities. And I adore them both. The DS9 is my favorite Star Trek. But yeah, mm. so I started watching these channels um, and genuinely enjoying them. And I was noticing some of the same names in all the chats. Uh, and then, you know, I started watching Mary. She was one of the first ones that I started watching Mary's Game Room, her mm -hmm. and Mark's uh, Saturday gaming stream. Oh, uh, matter of fact, the first stream I ever saw was when Mark got tased, y'all. And oh I was my. so excited. I'm like, my God, I found my people. Mark's almost getting tased. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, folks, never give Arwen <laughs> control of an electric appliance. I was just like, he's allowing himself to get tased for charity. This is freaking awesome. How then, American of him. I, I, know, I, know. I, I mean, I, I've come up with all kinds of ideas for him and he doesn't like any of them, but I'm like, you know, okay, whatever, Mark. We'll just make sure you're not, you know, your your pretty face isn't hurt, that you're not hit in the faces. Any, but anything below the neck is fair game. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak of the man, because we did speak about uh, Snowdub, because we saw Skull yes, and no. Tuck and Roll. Yes. So I thought... Well, Snowdub might turn up. And so he has. I hope you're doing well, my good man. And I hope work isn't a pain in the back or the ass. Or He's wherever. another one of the channels. I went over there mm. and, and you know, and started watching. What is this? These are, are these puppets? Muppets? What the hell are these? Well, Snow takes it to a whole new level, y'all. If if you have not seen any of his streams with the, uh, and I just, I have such a crush on Jolly. I have to admit, I just think Jolly's so cute. <laughs> Well, Jolly's my sexy this, beast. He really is. Th think of it this way, God. folks. Imagine the Muppet Show mixed with Family Guy. 
And I will I will say, zombie, if you weren't a mod, you probably wouldn't be allowed to say that. But <laughs> you're the main mod of the show, and and so much the better. So, uh, yeah, it was great. Well, seeing Mark tased? Oh, no. oh, hell yeah. It was awesome, wasn't it, Arlene? It was epic. Ooh. It was epic. And again, I was just, you know, this, this brand new little baby in this community, you know, just get to know people. And honest to God, as, as cheesy as it sounds, I really felt like I'd, I had a sense of home, that I'd mm. come somewhere where everyone was so nice to me and so open to me and so accepting of this, you know, new person. And no one had heard me talk at that point. Um, no one had heard me, you know, it, it, how loud I am, Southern and all that. No one, no one really knew anything about me except I was an avatar. That's all they really knew. And, mm -hmm. and my interaction with them in the chat. And it felt so good for the first time yeah, since my husband community. had really been sick. Mm. You know, he was sick for three years. Ooh. And, I, you know, I was his main caregiver. And that last year, I mean, I just really watched him go downhill. He had, he had cancer, y'all. I'm sorry for those of y'all mm. that, that don't know the story. He had stage four cancer when he was diagnosed. So they gave him a two-year life expectancy, but he lasted three. And those, you know, for those three years, it was pretty much making sure he had what he needed. The kids had what they needed, um, you know, and toward, toward that last year, it was all about his needs, which of course it was. I, I don't say that saying, oh, poor me. I say that saying that's you do what you do. And when your loved one is sick, you take care of them. But a, a lot of times you will, things will fall by the wayside that don't seem so important anymore. And when he did pass, it was like, God, I'm on my own. You know, I, I really, I mean, yes, I have my kids and, you know, my, my parents aren't too far, but as far as having that peer, you know, that, that person that is your friend as well as your lover, you know, mm -hmm. it just, it, it was hard. And then it had been a long time since I've had any friends that were just mine. Most of our friends were ours as a couple and to come in and to be accepted for me, you know, just as Arwen, it was like, wow, it was desperately what I needed. And then, yeah, I met Daryl and through Daryl, I met Arlena and, you know, Mary and I started talking on the phone um, and through her, I got to know Mark and then, you know, shit. Once I met Daryl and Arlena, that's all she wrote, you know, and, I mean, it's, it's like, I found my best friends. I found my sister. I found my family. You know, I started playing Fortnite with Fat Steven, got mm -hmm. to know him, you know, met some really not met Jester through him. And, uh, and yeah, I did y'all. And I ended up setting Jester Narlene up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. That's a feather in my cap. Yes. <laughs> How did that happen? How did that happen? How did setting you bring up? these lovebirds together? Because I have a feeling that this is... <laughs> Okay, all right, I'm going to spill some tea here. All Ooh, right. Go ahead. I started playing Fortnite with Steven and Jester really before I got to know Arlita. So mm -hmm. I knew him, you know, I, I knew Jester pretty well. And then I got to know her. And I, and, and, and I thought this for a while before I ever said anything to her. I'm like, you know, those two just would be great together. You know, knowing the way he is, knowing the way she is, knowing they both weren't looking for anything, because that's when it happens, y'all. That is the best time for romance. When you're like, nope, I ain't looking for it. I don't want it. I don't need it. Boom, lightning will strike. So it was last, uh, God, I want to say May, maybe March or May, Arlena. I can't remember. It was March or May. But I just kind of said to her, I was like, you know, Jester's a really nice guy, and I think y'all would be really good together. And she's like, oh, I don't know. What? No, no. And I'm like, yeah. And they had been playing for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, I planted that seed, and one thing led to another, and uh, here they are engaged. So I am so happy for them. I so will genuinely I, happy for them. I will say, though, ladies and gentlemen, have you seen a world map? Have you seen how far <laughs> apart... These people live. I mean, 
it's, you know, it's, that's it's the beauty of the internet though. That is the beauty of, of being able to communicate with people because mm. a lot of times, and I, you, well, anyway, yeah. A lot of times you just, you don't know un, until you know, and then you make it work. It's like, okay, you know, you're getting to know someone through stream yards or through a screen. It doesn't matter. You make it work and they made it work. And, you know, she's been out there, visited him and it's just, yeah, April, May. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, well, yeah. I'll tell you this folks. If these two great people start a family, it is thanks to this great community of people in particular, Arwen Avalon. And it's a close <laughs> to show, folks. If time travel ever becomes a thing, it's going to ruin us. Yeah, I used to be called Sassy Southern Belle. Now they call me Supreme Matchmaker. <laughs> oh. Perhaps we happy. should put Arwen in MILF Manor. <laughs> no! Oh, bit Bite your tongue. Eh. No, I'm sorry. I'm not toot my own horn, but I got way too much damn class to be on that show. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is never going to happen. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you no. this though, Arwen. My favorite character in that is so young because that had me in a laughing fit. Oh, I hate that term, Milf. And then after that dumb show, I hate it even more. I'll just. Mm -mm. Not well, here's an exclusive from, from Darlene. <laughs> that nursery is closed, y'all. She's like, nope, no babies here. Oh. Uh <laughs> I see you, Steven, because of Fortnite. Yeah, because of me. <laughs> And, of course, Fortnite, because, you know, mm. that is where they they did meet. So I'll yeah, give I've, Fortnite I've, some credit. I've publicly criticized Fortnite in the past. So I think it would be a little hypocritical of me if I started playing it. And <laughs> say, oh, this game is quite good. Yeah, go Generation Fortnite. Let's do the dance. <laughs> Those are some of the best streams ever, though. Those community Fortnite streams, they are mm -hmm. so much fun. They really are. Hmm. So anyway, but yeah, that's how I that's how I got into YouTube.